all praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called prison break. That is tonight's topic, prison break. It was inspired, all praise to the most high, all praises. Um, let's open up with the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 61 verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61 verse 1. Let's open up with that. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Come on. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Read that again verse 1 so I can catch it. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Come on. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit of the Lord. This is Isaiah speaking in the spirit of Christ. He's saying the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Okay, come on. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So the spirit of the Lord was upon Isaiah to preach good tidings unto the meek. Okay, the word tidings means news good news where tiding means news to preach good tidings unto the meek go ahead he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted mm -hmm. to proclaim liberty to the captives read and the opening of the prison to them that are bound and the opening of the prison to them that are bound so guess what what the the spirit of the lord was upon isaiah back then is the same spirit that is upon us this day. As we go out to the streets to wake our people up, that's the same thing that our forefathers was doing back then. Give me the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 4, verse 18. Watch this. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. Read. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. Read. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You see that thing? To set at liberty. To set at liberty, meaning what? Salvation, deliverance to them that are bound, them that are bruised, them that are oppressed, them that are crushed always. Okay, so what, I, what Christ is saying here is the same thing that Isaiah said because he was quoting Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah 61 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Come on. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Stop right because... there. The spirit, of the, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Okay, what is the spirit of the Lord that was upon Isaiah? Give me that in John 6, 63. Let's see what is the spirit of the Lord that was upon Isaiah so that he can go out there and teach good tidings to the meek. Okay? Read what you got. John 6, verse 63. Come on. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit the that quickeneth. The word quickeneth means changes. Born again. It is the spirit that quickens you. The spirit that changes you. Go ahead. The flesh profits nothing. Your flesh doesn't profit you nothing. Because your flesh, guess what? Your flesh will cause you to sin. Because your flesh lasts after many things. You understand? But the spirit will change your flesh to obey your mind when your mind is according to the laws of God. Read. The words that I speak unto you. Mm -hmm. They are spirit and they are life. You see that thing? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that Christ spoke unto us, that's the spirit he's talking about that was put upon Isaiah. Okay? Give me Romans 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law, the law, the laws of God is spiritual. So when it says the spirit of the Lord was upon me, the laws of God was upon him. You understand? The spirit of Christ 
which is the law, was upon him to take the same spirit and go and declare it to the captives. Okay? The children of Israel scattered among all nations as slaves, slaving, sa saving captivity in those lands. South Africa is one of those lands. Okay? Read that again. Verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual. Mm -hmm. But I am carnal, sold under sin. So now the law is spiritual. You understand? The laws of God is spiritual. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Come on. Wherefore I prayed, and mm -hmm. understanding was given me. I called upon God, and mm -hmm. the spirit of wisdom came to me. You see that thing? Wisdom is a spirit. It says, the spirit of wisdom came to me. He prayed, and understanding was given him. How do you get understanding? Sirach 21, verse 11. This is how you get understanding. I prayed, and understanding was given me. Okay. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 11. Read that. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You see that thing? When you keep God's commandments, you receive understanding. The spirit of wisdom will come upon you. Because why? Wisdom will tell you why this law must be kept. Okay? Wisdom must tell you why must you not eat the things at the bottom of the ocean. Why you mustn't be eating shrimp, lobster, and crab, calamari, pork? The spirit of wisdom will tell you that. Why? Because it will tell you why you mustn't eat that. Because the things it eats is not good for you. That's wisdom right there. Read that again, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. Read. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. You see that the perfection of the fear of the Lord. You must perfect your fear in your fear in God. How do you do that? You apply. You understand the judgments that will come upon you when you break God's commandment. That's wisdom right there. You understand? Second Ezra 9, verse 37. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Read that. Second Ezra 9, verse 30. Start of verse 36. Second is chapter 9, verse 36. Mm -hmm. For we that have received the law perish by sin. You see that thing? For we, he says, for we that have we that have received the law perish by sin. Because what is sin? First John 3 and 4, get that? For we that have received the law, we perish by sin. Because the laws was given to us. How did we perish? We ended up in slavery. You understand? Because of sin. Going against the law that was given to us to avoid punishment through sinning. Okay, read that. First John chapter 3, verse 4. So we can understand what is sin according to the Bible. Read that. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you break the laws of God. So let's go back. Second Ezra 9. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 36 in the Apocrypha. Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 36. Mm -hmm. For we that have received the law perish by sin. You see that thing? And now we, Hold on. It says, for we that have received the law perish by sin. When we break God's commandments, that's how we perish. And how did we perish now in these last days? Even over after every captivity after another, we will perish because of sin. Okay? Read that part again. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 36. Mm -hmm. For we that have received the law perish by sin. Come on. And our heart also which received it. You see that thing? And our minds also, they, them, our mind perishes because we received it in our minds. The Lord gave us the commandments to apply to our lives so that the mind can get right. So guess what? When we rejected God's commandments, what happened? Our minds perished, our bodies perished, and our spirits perished. 
Okay, come on. Verse 37. Notwithstanding, the law perishes not. You see that thing? The law, the law perisheth not. The law perisheth not. Come on. But remaineth in his force. But remains in full effect. Okay. The law perisheth not. So this thing of saying the laws of God is done away with, it will contradict, it will be contradictory of what we're reading. The laws of God is not done away with. The laws of God is forever. Okay. God's laws is forever. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7, verse 7 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. Come on. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I, I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. So this understanding that was given him, it was because he kept the commandments. And the commandment that he kept is to be kept forever. Because the laws of God endureth forever. They perisheth not, but they remaineth in its force. Full effect. The laws of God is in full effect. Okay? Read that again, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 7. Read. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. So that spirit of wisdom is the same spirit that was on Isaiah is the same spirit that is upon us this day, which is the spirit of Christ. Okay, now go back to where he was at now. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Now that we have a better understanding of what Isaiah is talking about, let's go back to Isaiah now. 61 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Read. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So now that spirit is the laws of God. Okay? That spirit is the laws of God so that it can be taught. You understand? It says the laws of God, which is the spirit, is the good tidings. The good tidings is the good news, which is the gospel. Okay? Go back to uh, Luke 4, verse 18. So we see what Christ calls it. Okay? Isaiah says good tidings. Let's see what Christ says. Luke 4 verse 18 again. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Come on. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. You see that thing? The gospel. The gospel. So the good tidings is the gospel. You understand? The good tidings is the gospel which is the good news. Give me the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 31. Acts 13. Verse 31. Acts chapter 13, verse 31. Come on. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Right. Who, who are his witnesses unto the people. So that's talking about the disciples. You understand? The disciples were walking with Christ. So he says they, are, they were his witnesses unto the people. Okay, because they seen him, they walked with him. Read. And we declare unto, the, unto you glad tidings. You see that thing? And we declare unto you, children of Israel, you so-called blacks and Bantus, Hispanics and Native American Indians, we declare unto you glad tidings. The good news, the gospel that Isaiah is making reference to, that, that Christ is making reference to in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. Read. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers. The promise that was made unto the fathers. So these glad tidings, which is the gospel, which is the good news. Guess what? That's the promise that was made unto the fathers. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children. You see that thing? God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children. We are the children today. You understand? The Lord has given the promise unto our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And like, guess what? Likewise, unto their children, which is us today. So that's what Luke is saying right here. Okay, because Luke wrote the book of Acts. Read, the, read verse 32 again. Come on. No, no, verse 33 again. Acts chapter 13, verse 33. Read. God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children. Mm -hmm. 
in that he hath raised up Jesus again. Come on. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. You see that thing? So he's quoting the book of Psalms. Okay, but it says, This day have I begotten thee, because Christ was the only begotten son of the Father that was used to do what? To bring us into the new covenant through his death. You understand? So that's the good news that was given to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the glad tidings. To who? To the, the captives, the prisoners, out of, so that the prisoners can be released from the prison house. So this gospel, guess what we're doing? We're breaking out of prison right now. Understand that. This is the real prison break. Not what you see on TV. Mm -mm. This is the real prison break right here. Understand that thing. Go back to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, mm -hmm. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. The good tidings, that's the gospel, okay? The same, the gospel, which is the promise that was made unto our forefathers. You understand, Ray? He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So now let's deal with this. It says to preach good tidings unto the meek. Who is the meek? Give me that in Psalms 37, verse 37. Psalms 37, verse 37. Watch this. Who is the meek? To preach the gospel unto the meek. Okay. Psalms 37, verse 37. Read what you got. Psalms 37, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Mark the perfect man. Come on. And behold the upright. Mm. For the end of that man is peace. Read that again. Read that again. Psalms chapter 37, verse 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. So now it says, mark the perfect man, right? Keep those words in mind. Mark the perfect man, meaning point him out. That's the perfect man. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. So the perfect man is the upright man. For the end of that man is peace. Watch this. Give me Matthew. Okay. Give me Matthew chapter 5. Give me Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Read that again. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jump down to verse, uh, read verse 5 for me. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So now you've got the meek. The Lord says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now watch this. Go back to Psalms 37, 37 again. Psalms 37, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Mark the perfect man. Come on. And behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. The end of that man is peace. Now watch this. Give me the book of First Kings, okay? First Kings chapter 8, verse 61. He says, mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man. Remember, don't forget. He says, blessed is the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Okay? Watch this. Read that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 61. First Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Mm -hmm. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God. Come on. To walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at the stake. So now, in order for you to be perfect, you must be keeping God's commandments. You must walk in his statutes and apply his commandments as at this day. 2021, we must be doing that in order for our minds to be perfect, our heart to be perfect. Okay, so don't let nobody tell you, no, nobody can be perfect. No, that's a lie because that the Bible says we must be perfect. 
And the Bible tells, teaches us how we can be perfect. You understand? Okay, go back to where he was at now. Psalms 37, verse 37 again. Psalms 37, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Ask the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. So the perfect man is the man that keeps the commandments, as we read in First Kings. And behold the upright. Give me that in Psalms 15. Okay, give me Psalms chapter 15, verse 2. Psalms chapter 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. He that walketh uprightly. He that what? And he that walketh uprightly. He that walketh uprightly. So remember, the perfect man is the one that keeps the commandments, and the end of that perfect man is peace. Now it says, he that walketh uprightly. So the perfect man is the upright man. Read. He that walketh uprightly mm -hmm. and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. So the upright man is going to work righteousness. Okay? The perfect man will work righteousness. What is righteousness? Give me that now. In Deuteronomy 6.25. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness. Mm -hmm. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. You as he thing? hath commanded us. As he has commanded us. So the righteousness that the Lord is talking about is keeping his commandments. You understand? So the Bible keeps saying the same thing over and over. So when it says to, to preach good, glad tidings unto the meek, good tidings unto the meek, the meek is those that walk uprightly. The meek is those that work righteousness. That's the meek. You understand? I'll give an example. Give me the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men that were upon the face of the earth. You see that thing? It says, the man, our forefather Moses, it says he was very meek. What, what did he do? He, sub, he humbled himself down to the laws of God. He kept the commandments. That's why it says he was very meek. Okay? He humbled himself down to what this Bible says. That's why it says very meek. He didn't put up a fight when the most High God was teaching him. Okay? So it says, above all men which were upon the face of the earth. You really need to think about that statement. Okay? Moses was, he says, was very meek above all the men on the earth during his time. That's some heavy stuff right there. That means the Lord saw the spirit in Moses even while he was in Egypt in his, in, in one, following the customs of the Egyptians and so forth. He, the, the Lord knew that when I wake that brother up right there, guess what? He's not gonna he's not gonna move to the left or to the right. He's gonna hold on to this book. He is gonna do what I say. He will fulfill all my will. You understand? That's some heavy stuff right there. Excuse me. Now go back to Matthew. Okay, Matthew chapter five. Matthew five verse five again. Matthew chapter five verse five. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You see that thing? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We're going to inherit the earth. Who's going to be on this earth? They, what is going to be established on this earth? The kingdom of heaven will be established upon this earth. And who's going to be on this earth? The nations are going to be on this earth, including us. And we will rule over them. That's our inheritance. Okay? Now, jump up to verse 3 now. The meek is the poor in spirit. Read verse 3. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Come on. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You understand? We are poor in spirit. says blessed are the poor in spirit. Because guess what? We as a people, we have the Bible with us. You understand? We have the Bible. Why? He says blessed are the poor in spirit. Because when it comes to spiritual understanding we are not poor when it comes to that but in terms of the riches that the defined by the world of the we are poor obviously 
You understand? But when it comes to spirit, we are not poor. We are not spiritually bankrupt. So all the rich of our people, the wealth of the wealthy of our people, they are poor in spirit. I don't care how much money they got. They are poor in spirit. You understand? Your petis mutsipe, he's poor in spirit. You understand? Your Caspanio vest, he's poor in spirit. I don't care how many Bentleys he can buy. He's poor in spirit. He don't mean nothing. Okay? He's poor in spirit. But the Lord is saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. Guess what? But we are not in sp spiritual. We're not poor as a people. You understand? Because we have the gospel. And as we apply, we start to see the bigger picture. What is the necessity of us keeping God's commandments? Because we shall inherit the whole earth. Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now watch how this comes together. Go back to Luke now. Chapter 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Come on. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the... To the poor. He you has sent me. To preach the gospel unto the poor. To preach the gospel unto the poor. To preach the glad tidings unto the meek. So the meek is the poor. You understand? The meek is the poor. Read. He has sent me. To heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. To preach deliverance to the captives. Come on. Covering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So now, give me the book of Isaiah 14, verse 32. Let's see who the poor is. Who is the poor? Okay? Because everybody that is going, the, the, you know, whether it's a white man, a Chinese man, an Indian man, an Arab man, they say, no, they are poor. No, they are not poor. Okay? Watch this. Let's see who is the poor. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Read that. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Mm -hmm. What shall one then unto the messengers of the nation that the Lord hath founded Zion the, and the poor of his people shall trust in it? So the poor of his people is Zion. The poor of his people, not everybody's people, no, his people. Okay? The poor of his people shall trust in it. So the Lord has founded Zion. So the poor is Zion, which is Israel. That's us. We are the poor, okay, that, that, that need the gospel. We are the poor that des in desperate need of the gospel so that we can be delivered out of this prison house that we're in. Physical prison, mental imprisonment, okay? Go back to Luke now, chapter 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You see that thing? So the gospel must be taught to the poor. The gospel must be taught to the poor. Okay? Watch this. Give me Matthew 11 verse 5. The gospel must be, must be taught to the poor, to the meek. The meek and the poor is making reference to the same people. Okay? Matthew chapter 11 verse 5. Watch this. Matthew chapter 11 verse 5. Come on. The blind receive their sight. Mm -hmm. And the lame walk. Come on. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. You see that thing? And the poor have the gospel preached to them. So that's the same thing that Isaiah said. The poor have the gospel preached to them. That's what's going on right now. Why, was the, why is it necessary for the poor to receive the gospel? So the poor can be delivered from oppression, to be delivered from the prison house, to be broken out of prison. You understand? Go back to Isaiah 61, verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Read. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Come on. He hath sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted. To do what? To, pro to bind up the brokenhearted. To bind up the brokenhearted. To bind up the brokenhearted. 
The brokenhearted is our people, the poor, the meek. We are the brokenhearted. You understand? Because we are always in distress, mentally and spiritually, physically. You understand? We are always distressed. So that's why the gospel is for us, because we need it. We are the conditions that we're in. We are the people that need the true gospel of Christ. Okay? So it says to send, it says, send me to bind up the brokenhearted. So that word right there is not a regular Negro word. Okay, let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18 again. Let's see the word that is used in the book of Luke. To bind up the brokenhearted. Watch this. Read that. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Read. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Stop right there. To do what? He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, the, to bind up the brokenhearted. So the word bind up means to heal. Heal the brokenhearted, the brokenhearted, which is the meek and the poor, which is Israel. You understand? That's what he's talking about right there. To heal the brokenhearted. Now go back to Matthew. Okay? To heal the brokenhearted. You know what? Give me Wisdom of Solomon 16 verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 12. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 12. Mm -hmm. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. Come on. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. You see that thing? By thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. So when it says to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up the brokenhearted, we heal them with the word of God. Our people is sick. You understand? So we use the word of God to heal them. Okay? Second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 69. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 69. Mm -hmm. And being judge, if he should if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word. That are what? And that are cured with his word. That are cured with his word. So what's gonna cure the brokenhearted? The word of God. That are cured. So the word of God is a cure. The word of the most high God is a cure. You know, when you go to the hospital. They give you medication. If they say, no, it's a treatment. It's not a cure. It's a treatment. But the word of the Most High, that's a cure. That's some heavy stuff right there. Let that sink in. Let that sink into your ears, like it says in Luke 9.44. Let it sink in into your spirit. Okay? Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 69. Mm -hmm. And being judged, if he should not forgive them, they are cured with his word. You see that thing? That are cured. That are cured with his word. Read. And put out the multitude of contentions. You see that thing? And put out the multitude of contentions. Because the contention is the maliciousness that is in, the, is in our minds. The word of God is a cure to get rid of those things. You understand? Is this The word of God is not treatment. It's, made, it's a cure. Period. That's heavy right there. That is heavy. Okay, watch this. Um, go back. Go back to Isaiah 61. Okay, Isaiah 61 and verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Come on. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me mm -hmm. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Uh -huh. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted you see that thing? To heal the brokenhearted with what? The spirit that was upon him. The good tidings that he was bringing to the people that are in the prison house. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty to the captives. You see that thing? Liberty to the captives. Deliverance. Salvation. Freedom from captivity. That's what liberty is. Because we're in slavery right now. Give me that in Baruch. Okay? But we are yet this day. Give me that thing. Baruch 3. I believe it's verse 8. Read that. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. 
Mm-hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day, yet this day, 2021, we are still this day in our captivity. We're still slaves. 1994 was not freedom. 1994 was the illusion of freedom. 1994 was not freedom, you understand? They gave us an illusion of freedom so our people can do not fight for deliverance. That's what 1994 was. 1994 was a crumb that fell from the, from the white man's table. You understand? And the black man was used to perpetrate that thing. Now look where we at. Okay? Read that again. Verse 8. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Read. Where thou hast scattered us. Where thou hast scattered us. Hold on. Where thou hast scattered us. The Lord scattered us among these nations. You understand? The Lord has scattered us among all the nations on earth. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Tobit. Okay. Tobit chapter 13. Tobit chapter 3. Is it 3? Let me see. Let me see. Now 13. Tobit 13 verse 3. Read that. The book of Tobit, chapter 13, you know verse 3. You're going to start at verse 1. Start at verse 1 right there. Watch this. Tobit, chapter 13, verse 1. Come on. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be God that liveth forever, mm -hmm. and blessed be his kingdom. You see that? And blessed be his kingdom. Blessed be God that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom that shall be established on earth under the rule of Christ and the Israelites, joint heirs with him. Read. For he doth scourge. Meaning he will and judge. Hath mercy. He will he judged us. We went into slavery. Colonization, apartheid. Okay. That's the scourging that the Lord brought upon us. Read. For he doth scourge and mm -hmm. hath mercy. And hath mercy. That's Christ right there. Let's talk about Christ. And hath mercy. Christ. Read. He leadeth down to hell. He does what? He leadeth down to hell. He leadeth down to hell. Give me Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. He leadeth down to hell. What is the hell making reference to? Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. Come on. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. My people are what? My people are gone into captivity. My people are gone into captivity. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hell hath enlarged itself. You see that thing? My people is gone into captivity. Slavery. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. So what is the hell that we are in? Captivity. Slavery. You see that thing? So go back to Tobit now. Tobit chapter 13. Verse 2 again. Tobit chapter 13 verse 2. Mm -hmm. For he doth scourge and hath mercy. He leadeth down to hell. Meaning he brought us into slavery. Okay, come on. And bringeth up again. Meaning what? He's going to take us out of slavery again. The prison break. Read. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. You see what he's saying? Nobody can, nobody can escape. That's what he's saying. You cannot escape the judgment of God. He says, no, there's no, there's ne he says, neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Okay, come on. Confess him before the Gentiles. You see what the, the Lord children is saying? Of Israel. We must confess the Lord before the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles is talking about the other nations. The Lord is saying we must confess him before the Gentiles. Go ahead. Confess him before the Gentiles. Ye children of Israel, read. For he hath scattered us among them. So the Lord has scattered us among the Gentiles. So the Lord said, We must confess him. How do we do that? Give me second Ezra 2, verse 36, I believe. Second Ezra 2, verse 36. Somewhere, somewhere there. I'm shooting from the head. Let me look at it. Yes, 36. Read it. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 36. Come on. Flee the shadow of this world. The sin, read. 
receive the joyfulness of your glory. The kingdom, come on. I testify my savor openly. You see that thing? He says what? He says I do what? Read that part again. Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 36. Mm -hmm. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my savior openly. I testify my savior openly. That's why it says confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. So how do we confess him? Guess what we do? We testify our savior openly. That's the Christ, the Messiah. Okay? That's how we declare, that's how we confess him before the Gentiles. We testify him openly. We go to the streets. We teach Jesus Christ is a black man and he died for his people and he's going to return and deliver us out of slavery. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Okay? Go back to Tobit now. 13. Verse, read 13 verse 5 now. Tobit 13 verse 5. Read. And he will scourge us from for our iniquities come on and we'll have mercy again mm -hmm. and we'll gather us out of all nations come on among whom he had scattered us you see that thing the lord is going to gather us among all nations among whom we are scattered because right now we are scattered among all nations all the nations on earth israel is there that's what the lord is teaching us here all the nations on this earth it doesn't matter where they at Israel is telling you Israel is in the midst of them. Israel is among them. They might not know who they are, but Israel is in them. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. That's some heavy stuff. Okay? Go back to Baruch now. 3 verse 8. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Where thou hast scattered us. Read. For a reproach and a curse. The curse is what is written in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 15 to verse 68. Go ahead. And to be subject to payments. Come on. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. You see that thing? So the reason why we are yet this day in our captivity is because we broke the laws of God. Is because we broke God's commandments. We didn't hearken unto the voice of the Lord our God. That's why we are yet this day in our captivity. But in his mercy, he is delivering us out of captivity. Starting with the spiritual deliverance first. Spiritually, we must be delivered first and foremost. Then comes the physical deliverance when the Lord returns. Before the Lord returns, spiritually, we must be delivered. We must come out of Christianity. We must come out of the Christian church. We must come out of those things. Jehovah's Wickedness, Seventh-day Disadvantage, Bazalwani, ZCC, uh, the Apostolic, whatever, listen, Pentecostal, all Roman Catholic Church, we must come out of that garbage. We must come out. Buddhism, we must come out of worshipping Buddha. We must come out of Islam, worshipping a rock called Allah. We must come out of those things. That's the physical, that's the spiritual deliverance that we must deliver, be delivered from. Because those things is the reason why our people are bugged out. Is the reason why our people is sick, okay? Mentally and spiritually and physically as well. Go back to Isaiah 61, verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, mm -hmm. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Go ahead. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You see that thing? The opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Meaning what? Freedom. We must teach our people freedom. Because right now, give me that in John 8, verse 32. John 8, 32. Because as a people, we are not free. Okay, we are not free as a people, we are yet this day in our captivity. That's why the spirit of the Lord will be upon the prophets in these last days, which is what's happening right now, to teach the gospel to 
the captives. You understand? Freedom to the captives. Okay? Read that. John 8.32. John chapter 8 verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth shall make you free. You see that thing? You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So what was Isaiah teaching? He was teaching the truth. So that the people can be free. Guess what Christ was teaching? The truth. So the people can be free. So it is today. Today we are teaching the truth so our people can be freed from the lies that is what? That they are imprisoned by. Because right now our people are imprisoned by lies. Right now our people are in chains because of these lies that they are teaching them in the Christian churches, in the political parties. You understand? So those lies have, have, have our people imprisoned. Our job is to break the chains, to deliver them out of that prison, spiritually first and foremost. Okay? Read that again, verse 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. The truth will set you free. The truth shall set you free. Okay, what is the truth? Give me that. Psalms 119. This is the truth. Okay, Psalms 119, verse 151. Read that. Uh. Psalms 119, verse 151. Come on, pay attention. Psalms chapter 119, verse 151. Come on. Thou art near, O Lord. Mm -hmm. All thy commandments are truth. And all thy commandments are truth. All thy commandments are truth. Okay? So, what is the Lord teaching us? The commandments of the Most High God, that's the truth that will set you free from slavery, from the lies of Christianity from the lies of being taught white Jesus, believing that Jesus is white, when Jesus is black according to the Bible, when God is black according to the Bible, when the Jews are black according to the scriptures, and the kingdom of heaven belong to us and our children, as we read in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 33. Understand that thing. So guess what? Go back to John 8, verse 32 again. John chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth shall make you free. And the laws of God, the commandments of God will set you free. Guess what? Liberty came through who? Who gave us liberty? Christ. You understand? Give me, jump up to verse 36. Who gave us the liberty? Christ did that thing. Read that. John chapter 8 verse 36. Come on. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You see what he's saying? If the Son, who's the Son? Christ, he is the son of God. He says, if the son of God shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Meaning what? No more captivity, no more slavery. You're going to be free forever because you're going to be ruling all nations on earth forever. That's why he's saying what he's saying right there. John 14 verse 6. Watch this. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Read what you got. John chapter 14 verse 6. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. You see what he's saying? I am the way. The way to the kingdom, he, you have to go through Christ. He is the mediator of the New Testament. Okay? Then he says, and the truth. He is the law. You understand? And the life, the everlasting life, you're going to get it through him. That's what he's saying right there. That's some heavy stuff. That's why it says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And that's what we're reading here. No man can come unto the Father but by me. He is the way to get there. So is the, if you, if you go do it through Christ our Lord and Savior, you're going to be free indeed, meaning for real. Not 1994. 1994 was not indeed. 1994 was not for real. No, that was a lie. That's why today we're still in slavery. Okay, our people are hungry. They are stealing food. You see what I'm saying? Our people are thirsty. They're looking for water. They are stealing water now. Okay? That's how bad it has gotten. So are we free? No, we're not free. We're still living in the ghettos, in the cuckoos. You know, no electricity and all of that. Are we free? No, we are not free. We're still slaves this day. And our people don't learn. They're still crying to the government hoping that the government is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to deliver them from these conditions. No, they are not going to do it. 
and they're not going to tell the people that we will not do it. They'll just be stalling, pushing the carrot to the next spot. You understand? Giving our people false hope, vain hope. Our job is to bring the good news to our people so our people can have something that is real for once in their life. You understand? Once and for all, the ultimate truth, the way that is going to get you deliverance and to rulership of all nations on earth. This is what our people need, the laws of God, the gospel, not politics. You understand? They don't need none of that. They need the word of the Most High. Watch this. Go back to Isaiah now, 61. Isaiah 61 and verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Read. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Read. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, Come and on. the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You see what he's saying? To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. As a people, we are bound. You understand? Bound, we are, we are oppressed. Bound, we are bruised. Go to Luke now, 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. Read. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Come on. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. You see that thing? In Isaiah it says, um, open to, to the open and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Christ says to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy. Okay? You know what? Before we get there, go back to Isaiah 61. Something I skipped. I want to deal with it. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I need you to put some power in your reading. Come on. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Read. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath Read. sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Read. To proclaim liberty to the captives. You see that thing? And to proclaim. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Remember it says we are yet this day in our captivity, right? We are the captives, okay? We are the, we are the prisoners in this prison house. South Africa is a prison house. America is a prison house. China is a prison house. Europe is a prison house. Wherever the, the children of Israel are, which is all over the earth, those are prison houses. You understand? And in order for us to be, to the, in order for the nations to maintain our imprisonment, they have to teach us doctrines to bind us spiritually to those to the prison houses. That's why people don't want to leave the, 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 the places we're at. Nobody wants to leave South Africa. They don't want to leave. They don't want to leave America. They don't want to leave. They're comfortable. You understand? They are comfortable. So in this country that we're in, our people say, no, South Africa, this is our country, our beloved country. None of them are talking about the country where we come from. Nobody's talking about that. That's why the Lord don't hear nothing they say. Give me the book of Hebrews real quick. Okay? Because that people don't talk about the, where they come from. Nobody talks about that. Everybody be talking, yeah, no, you know the Zimbabweans are doing this. You know the, so, you know the, the people from Ghana are doing, not realizing that we are, all the, we are all the same people. The people from Ghana, those are our people. The people from Nigeria, those are our people. The people from Zimbabwe, Many of them, those are our people. That's Judah right there. Okay? We came here running, running from Jerusalem. We ended up in the Gulf of Guinea. From the Gulf of Guinea, we migrated down here during the Bantu migration. When we was in Guinea, you know what we were called? We were called Mavumbu or Ovambu, meaning what? Judah. 
Mavumbu ovambu o judeo. Judeo. What is that? Judah. We are Judah. We left the Gulf of Guinea. We migrated down under the Great Bantu migration. We ended up here. Guess what? Today, we think this is our country. No. Given the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews 11, verse 14. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. Go ahead. For they that say such things. You, you know what? Hmm. Hold on. You know what? Start at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. Come on. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. That's talking about our forefathers. He's talking about our forefathers and foremothers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah. You understand? Etc. Go ahead. Having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. They were and what? embraced them. And were persuaded of them. So our forefathers that seen the promises but afar off. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They saw them but afar off. But they were persuaded of them. What does, what does that mean? They had faith. Our forefathers and foremothers, they had faith. You understand? Read. And were persuaded of them. And embraced them. They believed and them. Read. And confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You see that thing? They confessed. Our people don't confess it. Our people don't confess that they are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Because guess what? They were not in the kingdom. They didn't have the kingdom back then. Guess what? We don't have the kingdom right now. But our people don't confess it. Yet our foremothers and forefathers in the past, they confessed that they are pilgrims and strangers on the earth at that point. Guess what? So it is today. We are pilgrims and strangers on this earth right now. Go ahead. For they, for they that say such things mm -hmm. declare plainly that they seek a country. Because they did what? They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. That's why it says, it, it is plain that they declaring that they, they is what? They, de, they, declare, they, they declare plainly that they what? They seek a country. Because this is not our country. Our country is Jerusalem. That's where we come from. That's our motherland. That's our homeland. You ever notice, you know, we used to go to church and all of that in these Christian churches. They'd be singing hymns. And a lot of the times when they sing hymns or these, these spiritual songs, it's never about um, the Nile when we sing. It's never about, um, it's never, it's never about uh, you know, the Nile. It's never about the crocodiles in Egypt. It was never about the frogs in Egypt. No, it's never about that. Even today, you know, we'd be saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. What is that? What do you think that is? Because in the spirit, we know where we come from. You see that thing? Even in the churches that we 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 be, be in the you know those little church boys, we be running around and just be singing and the, and all that. Yes, those songs that we would sing, it was always about Jerusalem. You know, I remember there was a song, Elijah. You know, Elijah is Elijah. Okay, we used to sing about Elijah. You understand? Elijah was taken. Elijah with with the, with with his cut. You understand? We, we we would sing about that thing. We would sing about the chariot of Elijah. Where do you think that comes from? Because it's in the spirit. Okay? When I was a child, I used to sing that thing, man. Elijah with his chariot. When you read the book of 2 Kings, when Elijah was taken up, you understand, with a chariot of fire and horses of fire, when he gave his mantle to Elisha, you understand? That right there. Read that thing again. Hmm, you're taking me back now. Read that thing again. Hebrews 11 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. Read what you got. For they that say such things uh -huh. declare plainly that they seek a country. Declare plainly that they seek a country. You understand? We make it plain that we seek a country. Our people, when they march, they do it. Because when our people get frustrated, this is what they do. 
they march, they toy toy, they burn buildings, they loot. That's what they do. Okay? Because they have, that's their way of voicing out their frustrations because they have, they have put their trust in men. Now, when that man does not deliver, guess what they do? They retaliate, they loot, they, they, they destroy, they march, you understand? And they be setting things on fire to get the attention of the people they voted in government. You understand? Read. Verse 15. Uh -huh. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence uh -huh. they came out, come on, they might have opportunity to have returned. You see that thing? It's as if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out. Right now, as a, our people are not mindful of the country we come from. They are not mindful of that. Everybody's just thinking, yeah, me, I'm from Limpopo. Yeah, no, you know, we, you're not going to destroy our mall in Limpopo. You Listen, uh, our people, like, we've been conditioned to think small. We've been conditioned to think like a slave. Now the Bible is, is the Lord is, is, is what? Is delivering us out of this prison house. You understand? This, this Bible right here is a blueprint. You, you remember that show on, 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 on TV, Prison Break? That boy, Michael Schofield, he had tattoos on his body. And that, that was the blueprint, the blueprint on how to get out of that prison house, out of that prison. Guess what? This Bible right here, mm -hmm, that's the blueprint that was on his body. That's it right there. That's metaphorically, that's what it represents. The Lord has given us the blueprint on how to come out of this thing. The real prison break. Okay? Some heavy stuff, man. Read it again. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had they might have had opportunity to have returned. You see that thing? Hold this. Give me the book of Galatians 4, verse 26. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. I have to touch on this thing because this thing is the reason why people are so lost and confused. Okay? Galatians 4, verse 26. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, mm -hmm. which is the mother of us all. You see that thing? But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. You see that song that, um, is it KB or KG? What is it? Master is master something, right? Master KG, is it? Yes, sir. About Jerusalem. I mean, listen, yes, that whole song was about, was, it was all over this earth, that song. What people don't realize is the people that was really dancing the most to this song was the people that are connected to this place, Jerusalem. And because in that song it says Jerusalem, Ikayalami. You see, that's the one, right? Jerusalem, Ikayalami. Something like that. Uh -huh. Because what, what are they saying? That's our homeland. But listen, they are doing it out of what? Their eyes are still closed. They really don't. They say it, but they are not really connected to it the way we are now because we know this truth. So our job is to push this out there so people can make connections in the spirit of Christ. Okay, go back to where was that? Hebrews 11, verse 16 now. Hebrews 11, verse 16. Go ahead. But now they desire a better country. Now they that desire is. a better country. We desire a better country now because we are tired of being in the lands of our captivity. We want to go home. Okay, now we, we desire a better country because this right here where we at, this is a hell hole we are in. Read. That is, and heavenly. You see that thing? So the better country that we desire is a heavenly, meaning what? The rulership, the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's why it says we desire a better country that is an heavenly rulership on earth. The kingdom come, they will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Read. That is, and heavenly. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Read. For he has prepared for them a city. That's the city, the holy city of Jerusalem that will be built by these nations. But it says, therefore, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. When we declare that we seek a better country, that's when the Lord is not going to be ashamed to be called our God. Because as long as we are saying South Africa is our country, 
our beloved country, the most High God is ashamed of us. I'm telling you straight, the Lord is ashamed of us when we keep saying, no, this is our country, the Lord is ashamed of you. Shut the hell up, okay? We want to go home. We want the most High God to be pleased with us, not to be ashamed. Go back to Isaiah now, 61. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Come on. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me mm -hmm. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Come on. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Read. And the opening of the and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now we're gonna deal with that in a second. Go back to Luke. There's something I want out of Luke. Luke 4 verse 18 again. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. Come on. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. To preach deliverance to the captives. Read. And recovering of sight to the to the blind. Stop right there. To set it, and what? And recovering of sight to the blind. And recovering of sight to the blind. Because guess what? This gospel, the job of this gospel, right? When we go out there to teach it to our people, to deliver them out of these prison houses, is to recover sight to them. Because our people is blind. Our people don't see what they are looking at. They don't know what they are looking at because their spiritual eyes are closed. You understand? So they see with physical eyes. So our job is to go out. When we go out there, we open our people's spiritual eyes. That's why when we read, we read Revelation 1, verse 14 and 15. They know about the verse, but they don't, they don't understand to say, to know what it means. Because some of them, they even say, yeah, he's got woolly hair. But they can't tell you, okay, he's black. No, they can't. Because their eyes are closed. They read Genesis 2 verse 7 when it says, um, God formed man out of the dust of the ground. They read it, but they don't know. They, they are, they, because their minds is closed. Their eyes is closed. They can't say, they, they are unable to see that actually Adam was a black man. Adam was created from the soil. They can't see that. So because a lot of the times when we go to camp, Brothers be taking the, the, these scriptures. No, I know that already. No, the people don't know it. So Genesis 2 verse 7, those are heavy scriptures. Why? Because it opens the minds of our people. Because when they see it, listen, Genesis 2 verse 7, what? The Lord God for men of the dust of the ground. The minute you ask them, what is the color of the dust of the ground? Boom, right there. It closes the deal. Oh, wait a minute. No, it looks like me. So what was Adam? He was black. You see that? But they've been reading this Bible their whole life, but they've never seen that before. That's what it means, recovering of sight, to recover sight to the blind. Because we had sight before. That's what the Lord is trying to show us. We used to know this before. So now to recover, it means you had this before, you lost it. Now it's time to recover, to get it back. So we must recover our people's sight to this, to this Bible so they can see what really the Bible is saying. Okay, watch this. Isaiah 29, verse 18. You see the book of Isaiah, some heavy stuff in here. Okay, Isaiah 29, verse 18. Watch this. You know what? I mm. Read verse 15. Let me show you what the white man has done. That's the reason why people today, their eyes are closed. They can't see what they are looking at. Okay, read it. For instance, I'll give an example. We say the Bible, we teach that the Bible... We teach that in the Bible, Christ is black as it is written. But our people will still say color doesn't matter. So what does that let you know? That tells you our people are under a spell. Our people are under a spell. If it doesn't matter, but you say you believe the Bible, but when we read it, we say it doesn't matter. What is that called? A spell. Witchcraft. Buloi. That's what it's called. Okay. Isaiah 29, verse 18. 
Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Come on. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words no, of no. the book. Isaiah 29, verse 15. Read verse 15 for me. Let's start there. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. Read. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Come on. And their works are in the dark. Mm -hmm. And then say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? You see what they say? And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? You see that thing? It's a, so there's the people on this earth. Their job is to seek to hide counsel from the Lord. They want to hide their evil on this earth. And when they hide it, they say, who know, who, who know, who is going to figure out we are the ones that are actually pushing evil in the earth? Who's going to figure out that we are the ones that are teaching the people that Christ is white? Who's going to figure out that the reason why we are doing that is to hide the fact that Christ is actually black in the Bible? You see that thing? So when they teach our people in the Christian church saying, no, you are Gentiles. Who's doing that? The white man is doing that. To make sure that our people are lost. That's his job, by the way. So now, and after they do it, you see what they say to themselves? Among themselves, it says, and they say, who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Who's going to figure out that we are the ones that are responsible for this evil that is happening on this earth? That's what they ask themselves. Because in their minds, nobody's going to figure this out. But the most High God, the secret weapon of the Lord is the prophets this day. The people that nobody think of that we can accomplish nothing. We are the same people that the Lord will wake up and we're going to teach the gospel to our people and wake them up. Understand that? Watch this. Give me that in First Maccabees. I want to show you because it says, who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Watch this. The white man, this is what he says in his mind. First Maccabees chapter 1. First Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 9. You know, start at verse 7. So this is during the time of the Greeks, okay? The Greeks, white people. First Maccabees 1 verse 7. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 7. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. Okay, come on. And his servants Peru. Uh -huh. Everyone in his place. Mm -hmm. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. That's Alexander's oh. generals. When he says crowns, they took, they, they parried his kingdom among them. That's why it says crowns there. Go ahead. So did their sons after them many years. Mm -hmm. And evils were multiplied in the earth. What did he say? And evils were multiplied in the earth. And evils were multiplied in the earth. So what is the Lord telling you? He's telling you that when the white man took power in 331 BC under the, under the, the Greeks, it says evils were multiplied on this earth. So because in the history, they teach us that uh, the civilization started with the Greeks. No. When the Greeks took over, it says evil was multiplied on, the, on this earth. When the white man took over, it says evil was multiplied on this earth. So when they say, who knoweth us, who seeth us, guess what? Because they are trying to hide the fact that the reason why there's evil on this earth is because of them. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Go back to Isaiah 29. Verse 16 now. This is how deep the evil goes. Watch this. Verse 16. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 16. Read. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the pot is clay. You see what he's saying? He says, surely your thing, your, he says, your turning of things upside down. So this white man has turned everything upside down because they teach that the Bible is for everyone. They teach that Christ died for all, all men. They teach that Christ is white. You understand? And they teach that God is white. That's what they teach. And they teach that we are not, we are good for nothing, black people. We are kafirs, we are duckies, we are, we, are, we are monkeys, we are baboons. That's what they call us. Okay? So they turn things upside down. Right is wrong, wrong is right. Now men can sleep with men, women can sleep with women. 
it's all good in white Jesus. So they are, they are the ones that are turning things up, dead, upside down. They say they are the Jews. That's why they say Jewish people, Jewish people in Israel, white people. You see that thing? They have turned things upside down and they use the media to push that stuff out. And our people believe media. They don't believe the facts. They don't believe the Bible, but they believe the lies that is pushed by the media. Okay? Read. For, for shall the work say of him that made it, he had he made me not. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. You see what he's saying? So whatever the thing, what, whatever they do, it cannot turn back and change. No, you didn't make it like this. Because they dictate what it looks like. Because they have power over us right now. Okay? Now, our job is to what? Is to peel the what? The cloud that is over our people's eyes. Because right now, our people, their eyes are open, but they don't see what they think they are looking at. Because their eyes are closed. But our job is to recover sight to the blind of our people. Now read verse 18. Because the white man is turning things upside down. Our job is to turn things right side up with the word of God by opening the minds of our people so they can see who this white man is and what all these nations are doing together to destroy us. We watch God. Verse 18. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 18. Come on. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book mm -hmm. and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. You see what he's saying? And he says, in that day, is in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. Because right now, people are deaf. So our job is to make sure that our the eyes of our people is opened when we teach them the gospel of Christ. He says, on that day, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going on right now. That day is that day, is this day. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity, you out of sin. Because our people are, are blinded by sin. You understand? As long as our people are in the midst of sin, they are going to continue walking like blind men. Okay? They're going to see out of obscurity and out of darkness, meaning sin. So that's why we are out here, to teach our people so that we can recover sight to the blind of our people. Okay? So I wanted to touch on that because um, go back to where he was at now. Luke 4, verse 18. You see, this class is going to be based on Isaiah 61 and Luke 4, verse 18. There's a lot of meat in these verses, okay? I'm just picking a couple of, you know, small pieces of the meat, of the bone. Read what you got. Luke 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, okay. and recovering of sight to the blind. And recovering, and recovering of sight to the blind. That's why we went over Isaiah 29. You see, it says, in this day, guess what's going to happen? It says, the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. That's, how, that's what it means. Recovering of sight to the blind. All this. Give me the book of Revelation 3, verse 18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. Mm -hmm. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried, tried in the fire. Come on. That thou mayest be rich. Read. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Mm -hmm. And that the same, the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Come on. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. He says anoint, anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. The eye solve is a cleaning solution for your eyes. So this Bible is that cleaning solution. You understand that you may see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Okay, watch this. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Come on. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, mm -hmm. that ye may know what is the hope of his calling 
and what the riches of it, of his glory of the glory of his inheritance in the saints you see in the saints meaning in the israelites says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that's how we recover sight to the blind to give them what eyes of understanding because our people right now they don't have eyes of understanding because why they are blinded by sin you understand so our job is to give our people sight sight we must give them the spiritual eyes to understand the things that they are looking at you understand watch this give me go back to isaiah now 61 isaiah 61 verse 1 don't go back to Luke. Go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me. To preach good tidings unto the meek. Come on. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. We are the ones that are bound. We are oppressed. So that being bound translates into what? Being crushed and being oppressed. You understand? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. We're going to start at verse 6. Isaiah 42 verse 6. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6. Mm -hmm. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. And would and will hold not and will hold thine hand. I will keep thee. And will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people. For a light of the Gentiles. For a light of the Gentiles. This goes into northern kingdom. You understand? To a light for the a light to the Gentiles. Like you read about it in Isaiah 49, verse 6. Okay. So now the Lord is saying, He says, I have called thee in righteousness. The Lord has called us in righteousness, not in wickedness, in righteousness. That's why when we come in, we are, we are commanded to what? To be born again, to repent. Because the Lord is calling us in righteousness so we can keep the commandments and what? And magnify his laws. Okay, come on. Verse 7. To open the blind eyes. You see that thing? That's why the Lord is saying in verse 6, I have called thee in righteousness to do what? To open the blind eyes. Because our people, guess what? Their minds, their eyes are closed. They don't see what they really supposed to see. Go ahead. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. You see that thing? That's what this gospel is about. This gospel is to bring the prisoners from the prison. We are the prisoners. The prison is, South Africa is a prison house. You see that thing? And in, in this great prison, there's doctrines that are being taught to keep us in this prison house. What are those doctrines being taught? Entertainment is one of those doctrines. You understand? Um, social media is one of those doctrines. Television is one of those doctrines. Christianity is one of those doctrines that are being taught to keep you in this prison house. Democracy is one of those doctrines that are being taught to our people to remain in this prison house. To keep you comfortable in your oppression. Read verse 7 again. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7. Come on. To open the blind eyes. Mm -hmm. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. Read. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. You see that thing? Them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Because our people are sitting in darkness, in sin. Great darkness. Gross darkness, captivity, slavery, colonization, apartheid. You understand? That's the darkness is making reference to. All these philosophies that we're learning here. You know, that's what the Lord is teaching us right here. We need to understand what he's saying. Now jump down to verse 22. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 22. Come on. But this is a people... Robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared in holes. Read. And they are hid in prison houses. We see that thing? We are hid in prison houses. We are hidden in these prison houses. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 83. It says we are hid 
We are hidden in prison houses. South Africa is a prison house. Understand that. Because this is, land, this is not our homeland. This is the land that we were brought to serve our prison sentence among these nations. Hamites, because there's many Hamites here. Okay. Arabs, Chinese, white people, so on and so forth. Okay. Psalms 83 and verse, verse 4. You know, start of his three. Read three and four together. Psalms chapter 83, verse 3. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Come on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. You see that thing? And consulted against thy hidden ones. Remember, it says we are hid in prison houses. So the nations have consulted against us, the hidden ones. Where are we hidden? In the prison houses. In these lands of our captivity, we are hid. Nobody knows who we are. Nobody knows that we are the Israelites. What do I mean by that? The nations know that we're Israel, but if you ask an average person here on the streets, who are the Jew? Who are the Jews? They're gonna tell you it's white people. What color is Christ? White people is white. That's how we are hidden because they whitewash our history with their images. You see that thing? That's how we are hidden. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, come on. Verse 4. Verse 4. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, mm -hmm. that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You see that thing? The name of Israel, as these people are called, as they are the real Jews, we're going to hide that thing from them and from the world. Remember he said, Who knoweth us? Who seeth us? Who, under who knows that we are the ones that are doing this evil on this earth? Who can figure that out? But we will fi we figure in this thing out because the Lord has put his spirit upon us like it says in Isaiah. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Isaiah 42 verse 22. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Uh -huh. They are all of them snared in holes. Come on. And they are hid in prison houses. Read. They are for a prey, and mm -hmm. none delivereth. Come on. For a spoil, and none saith restore. You see that thing? So as a people, we are robbed and we are spoiled. He says, this is a people robbed and spoiled. Because guess what? We are in, we are in the prison houses. You understand? In the lands of our captivities. Guess what? In those lands, we are robbed and we are spoiled. They are robbing us of our children. They are robbing us of our culture. They are robbing us of our heritage and our houses, our land, and they are spoiling us with their philosophies and their, their demonic doctrines. That's how they are spoiling us, okay? It says they are, they are all of them snared in holes. What are the holes it's not making reference to? Hold this. Give me the book of Psalms, okay? Give me Psalms chapter 34, I believe. No, give me Psalms 31 verse 4. Psalms 31 and verse 4. Psalms 31 verse 4. Come on. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. Read. For thou art my strength. You see what David is saying in the spirit? He says, pull me out of the net that they've laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. So because he is saying in the spirit that in the last day, that's what they will do to us. You understand? They will put us in a net that they've laid privily for us. Meaning this net, this trap, they will set traps for us privately, in secret. They'll set traps secretly, and then guess what? In order for us to be snared therein. That's what David is saying, pull me out of the net that they've, that they've laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. What is the net? You understand? What is the holes? Because remember, it says we are snared. We are trapped in holes. It's talking about what? It's talking about... The system, we are trapped in the system as a people. Our people are trapped today in a political system. That's why they play that political game. Some of our people are trapped in a religious system. So guess what? They are trapped in that religious game, which is what? Christianity, you are being tossed to and fro. Christianity, Islam, Buddhism. You understand? Non-denomination, because I hear this a lot now. But it's all the same. Those are the net economics. Remember EFF was started because of that. 
no economic freedom fighters, not understanding that we don't even own the economy. But he's telling you that no, economic freedom in our lifetime, that's just a dream. That's a fairy tale. That's not something that's going to happen in this life. No, no. That thing is going to happen when the Lord returns. Right now, is not going to happen. That economic whatever, listen, that's just a waste of time. It's not going to work what he's doing. But he's fooling our people though. You understand? He's fooling our people. Because our people don't have the spirit of discernment to see that he, what he's saying, he doesn't even believe it himself. Because how is he going to make sure that our people, they are, they are economically free and they're going to be economically independent when he needs to get money from outside to be able to what? To, to what do they call lobbyists? They are lobbying. These lobbyists and all that, they be funding the political parties. They depend on external uh, investors. I mean, I remember Julius Malema used to go to different countries. He went to Oxford. He was all around during, he, he was in Europe looking for funding. He went to the US looking for funding, but he's talking about being delivered from this white man. You can't make this stuff up. But people have forgotten about all of that. You see that? Hmm. Okay. Go back to Isaiah 42, verse 22 again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared and holed. Come on. They are hid in prison houses. You see that thing? They are hid in prison houses. They are snared in homini. They are trapped in this political, economic, democratic, religious system. Our people are trapped in those systems. You understand? Because, mm, okay, never mind. Keep going. They are for a prey. You see that thing? They, hold on. They are for a prey. We are a prey now. We have, be, we have become a prey to this nation. The nations are preying on us. You know, they are preying on our ignorance. That's why, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why they make money out of the black, men's, the black women and the black men's ignorance. For instance, look at Gillette. You see, Gillette is a big company, right? Where they make razor blades, where you shave your beard. If the black man can keep the commandment not to shave his beard, do you know that that company will go down? You see, we don't see where our power is. If the black man can stop shaving his beard and making cheese cup on his head, that the company called Gillette, okay, is going to go down in flames. I'm telling you right now, here's another one, weaves. You see, if the sisters can keep the commandments and not envy their oppressor, wanting to wear white women's hair on their head. Guess what's going to happen? They, they, that weave industry will go down. Because here's another thing I saw. Um, I think, I don't know if she's a sister of Tandi Somazwa. It's a sister, right? Nsiki, is she the sister? I believe so. Sir. Yes, sir, she is. She's the sister, right? Okay. So I think she was getting on um, DJ Zinkle. She got on DJ Zinkle because DJ Zinkle, she put on social media because she started a, another business on top of that, the ones that she has already, the business of selling weaves. And it was a big thing because the people in the world, those fake black women, okay, that love their oppressor, they were congratulating her. She came in and said, listen, so with all the money that you got, this is what you are pushing out to teach our people, the young girls to hate themselves. And they got on the sister. They hated this. They, they hated what the sister, but the sister, she's right. Okay. She was condemning the business that she just ventured in, selling weaves, fake hair. Okay. And they say, no, the sister, because I see a lot of people don't like Nziki Nzwai, Mazwai. Is it Mazwai or what? Tandi Sama, what, what? Tandi Swama yes, Zwai. They don't like the sister. <laughs> There's some things that she says, you know, is good stuff. The rest is just garbage. But for the most part, the stuff that she says, they make sense. My point is, it says, 
It says what? They are for a prey. Not only are the nations praying on us, but our own people are praying on their own people because of our people's ignorance and low self-esteem and lack of identity. Because if our people knew their identity, they're not going to bleach their skin. They're not going to put weaves on their head. They're not going to relax their hair to change their texture. They won't do that. But because our people are in their ignorance, now you have these black, ashy, black women that are now what? Praying on our people because they don't know any better. That's where we come in now, okay? To set things on fire. Watch this. Um, give me, give me the book of Nahum, okay? Give me Nahum. Nahum chapter 3. Nahum 3 verse 1. Nahum chapter 3 verse 1. Watch this. Because remember, it says we are for a prey, right? They are for a prey. Watch this. Nahum chapter 3 verse 1. Read that. The book of Nahum chapter 3 verse 1. Uh -huh. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. Come on. The prey departed not. You see that part right there? The prey departed not. Who is the prey? We are the prey. The Lord is saying, but you are the you don't want to depart. What, what was the commandment that was given? Give me Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. It says, the prey departeth not. Who is the prey? We are the prey. Okay. But he says, the prey, this prey, which is the children of Israel, they depart not. They don't want to leave this kingdom. Okay, because they say this is their beloved country. Revelation 18 verse 4. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. Come on. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Read. Come out of her, my people, uh -huh. that ye be not partakers of her sins. Read. And that ye receive not of her plagues. You see what the Lord commanded us? He says, come out of her, my people. Come out of who? Who's the her? America. Because America is in all nations. America controls all nations. America is in bed with all nations on earth. That's why she's called the Great Hall. Because she, see, she's in bed with all these nations, committing fornication with them. You see that thing? So the Lord has commanded us to come out of this, this Great Hall called Babylon the Great. We must come out. Go back to Nahum. Nahum chapter 3 verse 1. Nahum chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Woe to the bloody city. Mm. It is full of lies and robbery. Come on. The prey departed not. They are full of lies. He says America is full of lies. And those lies, they push them through the media to keep our people imprisoned. These weaves, that's how they keep our people imprisoned. And guess what? Because the black women, they are creating businesses to push it out. When the young girls see these black women with weaves, guess what they are doing? They are continuing that vicious cycle of what? Low self-esteem and self-hatred. That's what they are doing. Okay? Full of lies and robbery. Remember, it says, this is a people robbed and spoiled. We are robbed of our culture, our identity, our nationality, you understand, and our, our, our country as well, meaning where we come from. Then it says, we are spoiled. Remember, it says, war to the bloody city, it is full of lies and robbery. So how do they spoil us? They spoil us with lies. That's how they spoil us. These nations are spoiling us with lies, and our people, they are eating those lies up, and they teach them to their children. Now what you have, you have a generation of, of dunderheads. That's what you've got. Not today. It's a new day, okay? It's a new day indeed, all right? Okay, let's go back. Isaiah 42, verse 22 again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Come on. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared in holes. Read. And they are hid in prison houses. They are hid in they prison are... houses. Come on. They are for a prey. They are for a prey. Read. And none delivereth. Nobody's delivering oh. us out of this. That's why people are toying and marching and burning down buildings. 
because they think they are going to be delivered by the government they voted for. You understand? He says, none delivered. Has our people been delivered from these conditions since, since we got here? No. We've never been delivered from these conditions. Obviously, that's not the solution. It says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Keep the commandments, you'll be, you'll, you'll be delivered from this. Read. For a spoil, and uh -huh. none saith restore. You see that thing? We have been spoiled. Nobody's saying we must be restored. Nobody's saying we must be paid back for everything that was taken from us. Nobody's saying that. But a few days of looting and burning down buildings, guess what now? People are being imprisoned. I understand because our people are, because that's stealing, that's robbing and all of that. You know, that's against the laws of God. Because we cannot do what they do. Because they, of course, they steal, they rob, they murder, they rape, they kill. That's how they got this country, these white people. That's how they got the economy. Wherever they've been, they've been robbing and pillaging and raping. Listen, taking, taking countries and slaughtering the people in those countries. None of them have been jailed for their crimes. But their day is coming. Okay? Give me Jeremiah 25, 21. Just for a second. Because you might be thinking, the Lord is oblivious to us going. No, he's not oblivious. It's, it's not the time yet. The 144,000 has not been sealed yet. Okay? Jeremiah 29. Um... Twenty-five, is it twenty-five, twenty-nine? I think that's what I want. Let me see. Yes, read it. Twenty-five is twenty-nine. Jeremiah said twenty-five is twenty-nine. Come on. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. Uh -huh. And should ye be utterly uh, unpunished? You see what he's asking. So he says, I, be, I, be, I, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. That's Jerusalem. When, that's when we went into captivity. You understand? That's the evil that came upon us. When we went into slavery, we was colonized and we was what? Colonized and put under the heavy and horrible system called apartheid, which is still going on today. Okay? And it says, should you be utterly unpunished? So now he's asking the heathens. So, listen, do you see how, how I'm punishing my people? You think you're going to get away with it? No, you're not going to get away with it. That's what the Lord is saying. Should you be utterly unpunished? Go ahead. Ye shall not be unpunished. You shall not be unpunished. Meaning what? They're going to get the stick. Go ahead. For I will call you a sword upon no, all no. the inhabitants. He says, for I will call for a sword. Meaning what? Judgment. Read that part again. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith Read. the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? That's what the Lord says he's going to do. So just because right now the, it seems like they are getting away with it, they are not getting away with it. The Mosai is coming for them. Understand that? Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 3. Okay, 2nd Ezra. Chapter 3 and verse... 34. Now, this is what Ezra's, start of verse 31, Ezra's is complaining now. Ezra's is pleading, is complaining to the Lord about the things that he was seeing in, in Babylon, okay, during the time of Persia, okay, but he was, he was, guess what? The, the, the Kushites, you understand? He saw the Kushites and he saw the Persians as well. So, during the time of Persia, Ezra's, he lived during, also during that time. Because after Babylon came Persia. Now watch this. Second Ezra 3 verse 1. I want to show you something. It's something that I just picked up. You know verse 2. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 2. Go ahead. For I saw the desolation of Zion. Mm -hmm. And the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. Now when you read this verse. This is a heavy verse right here. You see I pondered on this verse. Watch this says. It says for I saw... The desolation of Zion, meaning the destruction of Zion. Right now, this Zion is destroyed. We're at the law estate. We're on the bottom. Okay? Then it says, and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. So, the reason why Babylon is wealthy, the, no, the reason why Zion is desolate, 
That's why Babylon is wealthy. When you see Babylon being wealthy like this, it's because Zion is desolate. You see this thing? That's heavy right there. Because Babylon back then, that's the, that's the ancient Kushites, the Ethiopian Kushites. Today, it's America. America is thriving while Zion is at the bottom. That's what we're seeing here. It saw the desolation of Zion and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. So where does Babylon get its, get, get its wealth from? From Zion. Because wherever we're scattered, the Lord makes sure that we have food in the lands of our captivity. Guess who's robbing, the, who's robbing us of that food? Babylon is doing that. You see that? Now read verse 31. Watch this. Second is chapter 3, verse 31. Come on. I do not remember how this... You know what? Hmm. Read verse 29. Second is chapter 3, verse 29. Come on. For when I came to the and had seen impieties without number. Impieties, okay. Injustices without number. Evil without number that was going on. Read. And had seen impieties without number. Mm -hmm. Then my soul saw many evil doers in this 13th year, so that my heart failed me. So he's saying, listen, he says, my soul saw many evil doers in this 30th year. So he's seeing a lot of evil that is going on, right? Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 30. For I have seen how thou sufferest them sinning. So now Ezra is saying, he's saying to the Lord, he says, I see how you allow them to sin. Because suffereth means say, allow. He says, I see how you allow these heathens to break your laws. Read. And as prepared wicked doers. No, no. Come on, read it right. And as spared wic wicked doers. And as spared wicked doers. Who was the wicked doers? Babylon. The Nilotic Kushites. Okay. In Ethiopia. But today it's talking about the white man and all his allies, China, Europe, Russia, and so forth. Go ahead. And has destroyed thy people. And has destroyed thy people. Because right now as a people who are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Go ahead. And has preserved thine enemies. Go ahead. Come on. And has not signified it. So now Ezra is saying, listen, it says, I see you allowing the wicked doers to to." to get away with murder and all that. And, and you have destroyed thy people and has preserved thine enemies. Watch this. Verse 31. Verse 31. I do not remember how this way may be left. Read. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? You see what he's asking? Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? That's what he's asking. Are they better than us? Come on. Or is there any other people that know thee beside Israel? Is there any other people that know you outside of Israel? No. Read. Or what generation has so believed thy covenant as Jacob? None. Come on. And yet their reward appeareth not. He says, yet our reward, Jacob's reward does not appear. Read. And their labor has no fruit. Our labor has no fruit, he's saying. Come on. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth. Mm -hmm. And think not upon thy commandment. You see what he's saying? He says, I've gone here and there, and I see the heathen, they are flowing in wealth. They are rich. They are wealthy. You understand? It says, and think not upon thy commandment. Isn't the same thing going on today? Because when you look at the white man, he's living large. Everything's good for him. You understand? And they don't think once about God's commandments. Go ahead. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance. Mm -hmm. And there's also that dwell in the world. Read. And so shall thy name, and so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. You see what he's saying? He says, now compare the wickedness in, in balance. Their wickedness in terms of what? Their wickedness and we doing righteous, but our righteousness, he says, is still not enough 
for you to tend to us and punish them. Go ahead. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Read. Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Come on. Thou shalt find that Israel, by name, hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. You see what he's saying? He says, thou shalt find that Israel, by name, hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen, he's saying. So Ezra was complaining, you understand? But when you read the next chapter, now he's been rebuked, okay? But my point is, what I want to show you here is that, as a people, the nations are not going to get away. They are going to get punished. It's just, now is not the time yet. So our job is to be patient while we are being broken out of this, this prison right now. Spiritually, we are being broken from this prison that we are in. Because right now we are imprisoned. You understand? Now the Lord is loosening our chains so we can escape the plantation. Watch this. Give me... Um, Isaiah 42, go back there. Isaiah 42, verse 22 again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Come on. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared in holes. Come on. And they are hid in prison houses. Read. They are for a prey and none mm -hmm. deliver it. For a spoil and none saith restore. Nobody says restore. So we are in prison houses. We are hid in these prison houses and we are being indoctrinated to be kept in the prison houses. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 14, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17. Come on. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his, of his prisoners. Read that again, verse, verse 17. Read it right. Put some power. Come on. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17. Read. That made the world as a wilderness. Hold on. And it says, this man, because this, this chapter is, goes into Lucifer, which is the white man. It says, the white man has made the world as a wilderness. Meaning what? Wherever he goes, he just leaves, leaves those countries desolate and impoverished. So he says now, he says, has lived the world, has made the world as a wilderness. You understand? He's destroying the earth. Remember when, um, during the Manhattan Project, right? The, the Manhattan Project, when they were building nuclear bombs, the, the, the guy, what was his name? Uh, Oppenheimer, right? He said, I mean, he says what? He says, I'm a destroyer of worlds. He's, that's what he says. He says he's the destroyer of worlds when they created the atomic bomb. You understand? For, during, for World War II. Okay? He says he's a destroyer of worlds. He says he made the world as a wilderness. Okay? Read. And destroyed the cities thereof. You see what he's saying? He's destroying the cities there. Or wherever he goes, he leaves those countries and cities in desolation. That's what he does. Read. That open not the house of his prisoners. You see that thing? That open not the house of his prisoners. He is not opening the, the prison houses for the prison. Who's the prisoners? We are the prisoners. You know how they don't open it? Every, every, every year, they keep pushing things out. For instance, you know, when, when Christmas is about to... Uh, about to come, they'll be pushing Christmas things from the time in S September already. They'll be talking about Christmas. August is coming. They say, no, it's Women's Month. Is it August or September? August, right? Women's Month. Uh -huh. Right now, we are one. This is July, right? July, August. So next week, you're going to start to see that women's stuff, garbage. You're going to start to see that stuff. Women's Month. There's, there's Father's Day but you have Women's Month. Unbelievable, okay? So what you are seeing here is, it says, and that open not the house of his prisoners. We are his prisoners right now, meaning we are his captives, like it says in Isaiah chapter 61. We are the captives, okay? 
Read verse 17 again. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17. Read. That made the world as a wilderness uh -huh. and destroyed the cities thereof. Read. That opened not the house of his prisoners. That opened not the house of his prisoners. Because guess what? Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. He says, that open not the house of his prison. We are the prisoners. How did we become imprisoned in these lands? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 now, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. Read. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. And he shall put a yoke of iron no, 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 no. Come on, read it again. Read it right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall, shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see what the Lord is saying right there? It says, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies meaning what we're going to become prisoners to our enemies we'll become prisoners we're going to become war captives to our enemies okay it says which the lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness think about it when you are in prison right they control every aspect of your life they control the food you eat they control the water you drink they control the clothes on your back. They even control the place that you sleep in, the, 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 the way you sleep. They control that. They control the size of where you sleep. It's like a matchbox. That's where you are in there every single day. They tell you when to come out. They'll be telling, no, now it's time. The, the, the prison gates will be opening. Because when you watch these uh, shows, you see how, how it works. You understand? They control every aspect of your life. And that's where we at as a people right now. Right now, you notice, we don't have food. There's no food. There's no water. There's no electricity. You understand? It's difficult to find jobs, so on and so forth. It's difficult to feed your families and so forth. Why? Because what we're reading is, the Lord says you are going to be a prisoner to, these, to your enemies. And as a prisoner, the, the owner of the prison controls every aspect of your life. So that's what it means when it says um, that open not the house of his prisoners. Remember in Egypt, the Lord had to send Moses to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. He didn't want to do that. That's the same thing today. They don't want to let us go. You know how they don't want to let us go? They, they what? They indoctrinate us. Christianity, Islam, democracy, economics and so forth. Uncertain riches. Fame. That's how they, 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 that's how in the spirit they say they don't want us to let, they don't want to let us go. That's their version of the Pharaoh saying, I'm not going to let your, my people, I'm not going to let these people go. They're supposed to work. That's the point. Okay. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Zechariah. Okay. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. But this is a prison break right here. You understand? What I'm showing you is that we are in a prison house and we are being given the food of this prison house is what? They are feeding us with, they are feeding us with spiritual food. But that spiritual food is not good for our soul. It's for our destruction. You understand? They are feeding us with spiritual food, but it's not for ours. It's not, that food is not good for our soul. Entertainment, okay, uh, politics, religion, democracy, economics, and so forth. You understand? That's the, that's the food that they're feeding our people on a daily basis. Television, social media. That's the spiritual food. That's the prison food they are giving us. That's the prison food. Okay? Zechariah 9 verse 12. Read that. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Mm-hmm. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. You see what he's saying? Turn you to the strongholds, ye prisoners of hope. 
The Lord is commanding us to wake up, you Israelites. Turn you to the stronghold. What is the stronghold? The Bible is the stronghold. You understand? And we are the prisoners of hope. Because guess what? We're always hoping all the time. We're hoping now, no. This one that we elect in office is going to change for us. He's going to do things better for us. He's going to give us jobs. He's going to give us better housing and so on and so on. We're always hoping. Because we trust in men, not in the most high. That's why he says prisoners of hope. Now he says stop hoping and turn to the Bible so you can get up out of here. That's what he's saying. Read it again. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Come on. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Ye prisoners of hope, come on. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. The Lord is saying he's going to render double unto us. That's what he's saying. He's promising us that I'm going to get you out of this thing. And I'm going to give you double for everything that you've lost. I'll give you double. But we must turn to the stronghold, which is the Bible. We must return back to this book. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Now the Lord is commanding us, come out of this prison house, you Israelites. Okay, get your mind right. I'm going to render double unto you. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Read that. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Come on. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Mm -hmm. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Come on. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You see what the Lord is saying he's going to do for us? This is heavy right here. Read it again. Read it again. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. You know what? Mm. Start at verse 8. Start at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. But thou Israel art my servant. Mm -hmm. Jacob whom I, whom I have chosen. The seed of Abraham my friend. Come on. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth mm -hmm. and called thee from the chief men thereof. Meaning and said unto thee, our, the chief men, our enemies, go ahead. And said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I have chosen thee and have not cast thee away because of the promise, the covenant that he made with our forefather, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for he I says, am thy God. don't be fearful. He says, fear not. Fear thou not, O Jacob. Don't be fearful. You understand? Don't be fearful. The Lord says, I got you. Read. Be not dismayed, for uh -huh. I am thy God. I am thy God. Come on. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee. Come on. Yea, I will, I will help thee. I will help thee. The Lord says he is going to be our help. He is our helper. Read. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We, meaning with the laws of God. He's going to give us the commandments. He's going to give us power before he returns. Power to repent, get ourselves right so we can be eligible to receive the kingdom that's coming. Read. Come on. Behold, all they that were increased against thee no, no. shall be as... No, all they that were incest against thee, meaning those that were fighting against us, those that put us in slavery, those that oppressed us, he's saying. Read. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They're going to be ashamed and confounded for what they've done to us. Read. They shall be as nothing. They're going to be as nothing, meaning what? They're not going to rule nothing no more. Go ahead. And they that strive with thee shall perish. They that strive with thee. How did they strive with us? They put us in slavery. They bombed our cities that we built. When you read the history, you look what they did to Sophia Town during, and during the time of um, um, D.F. Malan. What did he do, that Francois, that demon? He, he dro they dropped bomb on Sophia Town. That's the history you don't know. They dropped, bombed on, they dropped bombs on that place. We had restaurants, we had... We had restaurants, we had buildings, we had hotels. They dropped bombs because they were jealous and they, because of jealousy and hatred. You understand? Read. 
Come they on. shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Read. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee. Because they contend with us. They are always fighting with us. Whenever we try to establish something for ourselves, they always come into sabotage. Read. They, they that war against thee shall be as nothing. Mm -hmm. And as a thing of naught. They that war against thee shall be as nothing as a thing of naught. Because when did they war against us? Watch this. All the time throughout history. Okay. Because John the Revelator talks about this thing. Give me Revelation chapter 13 real quick. Okay. Revelation chapter 13 and verse. Read verse 7. Revelation 13 verse 7. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7. Come on. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Uh -huh. And to overcome them. Read. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. You see that thing? It says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. They make war with us. When they conquered us throughout history, you understand, as an example, because he's talking about Esau here. When did they conquer? When did they make war with us? During the Renaissance in 1453, when they overthrew us, when we was ruling Byzantine. You understand? When we was ruling the city of Constantinople, Byzant, the, Byzant, the Byzantium Empire, during the Dark Ages, that's when they made war with us and they overcame us. They took over our city in 1453 during the Renaissance. And from that point on, guess what happened? They've been overthrowing us and changing history as we know it. You understand? Unto this day. And they overcame us in slavery. When they took us on, they put us on slave ships and they sold us across the across the world working together with these other nations to do so okay go back to isaiah 41 isaiah chapter 41 verse 12 isaiah chapter 41 verse 12 come on thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them even them that contended with thee that they that war against thee shall be as nothing and there's nothing, as, and there's a thing of naught. Meaning what? They are going to be wiped off. Okay, come on. Verse 13, read. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. You see what the Lord is commanding? He said, listen, I'm going to help you. I got you, the Lord is saying. He says, I'm waking you up. I'm going to help you to do this thing. I'm going to help you to overcome your sins. I'm going to help you to what? I'm going to help you to overcome the mental hang-ups you got. You understand? All that disease that you used to struggle with, I'm going to take that thing away. I'm going to help you. Okay, come on. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Thou worm Jacob. He says, fear not. Put some power. Come on. He says, fear not, thou worm Jacob. Right now, we are, we are like a worm. We have no power. We are on the bottom. We are like a worm. That's what he's saying. But he says, fear not. The worm, Jacob. Read. And ye men of Israel. And ye men of Israel. Go ahead. I will help thee, saith uh -huh. the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So he keeps, he, he keep, he, the Lord is assuring us. He said, listen, I'm going to help you, the worm, Jacob. Right now you got no power, but I'm giving you power to overcome your sins so you can prepare for my coming. That's what he's saying. Read. You know, Behold. all that drop. Mm, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Read verse 15 now, watch this. Now listen what he's saying, what he's going to do. Watch this. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. You see what he's saying? Remember, in verse 14 it says we're a worm. Now verse 15 it says, behold, I'm going to make, he says, I'm going to make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. What is that called? That thing is talking about is a war machine. He says, I'm going to turn you into a war, a weapon of war. That's what he's saying. I'm going to turn you, Jacob, into a weapon of war, a new sharp threshing instrument, a, an instrument used to execute. You understand? That's what he's saying. Having teeth. We went from a worm. Now he's saying you're going to have teeth. Okay? 
That's when the Lord returns, when we have those spiritual powers to deal with these nations. Go ahead. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. The meaning the great and kingdoms. When he says thou shalt thresh the mountains, he's talking about these great governments on earth. Read. And beat them small. Mm -hmm. And shall make the hills as chaff. You see that thing? We're going to destroy them. They are going to bow the knee. That's what he's saying. Read on. Thou shalt fan them. Thou shalt and what? the wind. Thou shalt fan them. Thou shalt fan them. That's the same thing we read in we, we read we read day before yesterday in Matthew 3, verse 12. Go ahead. And the wind shall carry them away. Mm -hmm. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. You see that thing? Because we're going to bring chaos upon them. We're going to bring war upon them. Read. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord mm -hmm. and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. And we shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Watch this. Go back to Zechariah chapter 9. Now read verse 13. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 13. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 13. Mm -hmm. When I have been Judah for me, you see that thing? What, what, what we're about to read in Zechariah is the same thing that Isaiah is saying in, verse, in Isaiah 41 verse 15 down. Zechariah is saying the same thing. Zechariah 9 verse 13. Read that again. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 13. Come on. When I have been Judah for me, uh -huh. fill the bow of Ephraim mm. and raised up thy sons, O Zion, Come on. against thy sons, O Greece, Against thy sons, O Greece, meaning what? We're going to bring war to Edom. That's Greece. Go ahead. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. As, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. The Lord is saying he's going to take Judah. You understand? He says, I have bent Judah for me. And filled the bow with Ephraim. So Ephraim will be the bow. Judah will be the one, will be the one that is going to be bending to propel the bow. That's what he's saying. That's a war instrument. That's a weapon of war. He says, I'm going to tell you, Israelite, that worm that the nations are being, are being crushing upon you. Because a worm, what do you do to a worm? You just step on it and you crush it. And it what? It just disintegrates. Okay? That's what the nations are doing to us right now. But on this day, guess what? That worm is going to be turned into a weapon of war. And the no nations will stand before us. Understand that. Right now, the Lord is delivering us out of this present house spiritually. When the Lord returns, physically, we are going to be delivered. Then the Lord is going to teach us again and train us and change us into what? Into those gods that the nations know that we are, that they are scared for us to wake up. Okay? Read that again. Verse 13. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 13. Read. When I, be, when I have been Judah for me, uh -huh. filled the bow with Ephraim, Read. And raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. You see that thing? And, and raise up thy sons, O Zion. What? That's what the Lord is doing right now. He is raising up his sons, okay, and daughters too. Read. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. Read. And the Lord shall be seen over thee. Uh -huh. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. You see that thing? It says the Lord shall be seen over us. Right now, the Lord is not seen over us because guess what? We're still in our wickedness. We need to get ourselves together. As we are getting ourselves together as a people, guess what? The Lord, the glory of the Lord will be shown upon us. Read. And the Lord, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet mm -hmm. and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. You see that thing? The chariots. The whirlwind of the sun is going into the chariots. Because at the, on this day, the Lord is bringing war upon these nations and he's going to use the Israelites to do it. Hold this. Give me that in... Um, watch this. Give me uh, Jeremiah 16. Okay. Jeremiah 16 verse... Uh, I believe it's 16. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Jeremiah 16. I know he's in 16. Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 16. Yes, read that. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16. Come on. Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. You see that thing? Remember what Christ's first ministry was. He says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. What he was telling the, 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 when he was putting together the dream team. 
He says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Right now, we are fishing for men now. We are, now we are fishers of men right now. That's why when we go out there, we are going out fishing. But the fishing time is going to be over. Guess what's going to happen after that? Next part of the verse. Come on. And after will I send for many hunters? You see that thing? A hunter. He says, then I'm going to send for many hunters. That's when we have those spiritual powers. When we have come out, this is when now we have been in the wilderness with the Lord for a while. When the Lord is teaching us again to get our, to get our mind right, to prepare to go into the promised land. You understand? Read. And they shall hunt them from every mountain. They shall what? And they shall hunt them from every mountain. They shall mountain. hunt them. He says, we're going to hunt these nations. And we're going to hunt these wicked Israelites who don't want to repent. Go ahead. And from every hill mm -hmm. and out of the holes of the rocks. You see that thing? So that's what the Lord is saying right here. The most High God says, right now you are fishers. But when the Lord returns after we are taught again the right way, everything being cleared up, he says, you're going to be turned into hunters. No meaning on that day, you don't have to sit there be trying to convince a Negro who doesn't want to stop blonding his hair. Them days are over on that day. You don't got to sit there just be pleading with the Negro. No. On that day, you're going to be chopping bodies off on that day. Right now, we have to be pleading with the Negroes and showing them be patient with our people about this thing because they are rebellious and they are rebellious and stubborn. Okay. Go back to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14. Read. And the Lord shall be seen over them, mm -hmm. and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. Read. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with the whirlwinds of the south. Read. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. You mean me? They shall go ahead. And they shall drink mm -hmm. and make a noise as though as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. Meaning what? Yes, we're gonna rejoice when we see our enemies go down. Go ahead. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day. As the flock of his people. You see that thing? Because when the Lord returns, he's coming for our deliverance. Read. <clears throat> Excuse me. For they shall be as the stones of a crown, mm -hmm. lifted up as an ensign upon his, upon his land. Read, meaning Jerusalem is going to be established again. Come on. For how great is thy goodness. No, and no. How great... for, how, for how great is his goodness. Go ahead. For how great is his goodness, mm -hmm. and how great is his beauty. Read. Corn shall make the young men cheerful, and new wine the maids. Now, that's when the Lord is going to be there. Remember, he says, I'm going to help you, O Jacob. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid, thou worm Jacob. I'm going to turn you into a what? He says, I'm going to turn you into a new sharp threshing instrument, a weapon of war. The Lord says he's going to do. Okay, go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 61, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 2. Go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and, day, and the day of vengeance of our God. And the what? Comfort, and the day of vengeance of our God. And the day of vengeance of our God. So the day of vengeance of our God is going to do what to us? Next part of the verse. To comfort all that mourn. To comfort all that mourn. So the day of vengeance is for our comfort. Hmm. That's a beautiful thing right there. The Lord is saying the day of vengeance, the day of when the Lord is going to bring vengeance on this earth, it will he'll be doing it to comfort us. You see that? Read. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Read. To give unto them beauty for ashes. You see that thing? The Lord is going to give unto us beauty for ashes. Because right now, we don't have beauty. The beauty of the Lord is not upon us. 
Give me that in Isaiah 4 verse 2. He says he's going to appoint unto us beauty for ashes. Meaning he's going to replace the ashes with beauty. That's what he's saying. Isaiah 4 verse 2. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 2. Mm -hmm. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. You see that thing? On that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious. Right now, that's not what's going on. But the Lord is building us up. Come on. And the fruits of the earth shall be excellent and mm. comely for them that are escaped of Israel. You see that thing? Them that are escaped. Them that are escaped. That's the key word. Them that are escaped. Second Ezra chapter 9. Them that are escaped of Israel. Them that are escaped. Mm. Wait, wait. Yep, second Ezra chapter 9 and verse. You're gonna start at verse. Read verse 6. You know what? Read verse 7. Let's just get to the point. Read verse 7. Second Ezra 9, verse 7. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Come on. And everyone that shall be saved. And everyone that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works. And by faith. Whereby ye have believed. You see that thing? And everyone that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works. And by faith. So it's not just by your works. But you must have faith as well. Whereby ye believed. So now go back to Isaiah 4 verse 2. Them that are escaped out of Israel. Read that. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 2. Mm -hmm. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. Read. And the fruits of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. For them that are escaped of Israel. You're going to escape by your works and by your faith. You understand? Because on that day, where those that are escaped, the branch of the Lord is going to be beautified among them. That's what he's saying. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. This is after the destruction. What's going to happen to us? You understand? The destruction that's going to happen when we get delivered, guess what? The beauty of the Lord will be seen upon us. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Uh, go back to Isaiah now, 62. I mean, 61, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. Mm -hmm. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Read. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You see that thing? We need that thing. We are the people that need this. You understand? To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, because we are mourning. That's why in Jeremiah 14, it says, Judah mourneth. The Jews are mourning, okay? That's what we're reading here. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Because right now, our beauty is like ashes right now. That's why they teach us to hate ourselves, to hate our hair, to hate, to hate our big lips, to hate our big gums. You understand? All of that to hate our beautiful black skin. They teach us to hate ourselves. Them days are over, okay? Read. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You see that thing? So on this day, the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to put unto you beauty for ashes. Okay? The oil of joy for mourning. That oil is talking about the understanding. Okay? He's going to nourish us. He's going to take care of us. The garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise is talking about what? Those, those God-level bodies that we're going to receive. In the twinkling of, a, twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Those that are escaped of Israel. That's the key right there. Okay, come on. Verse 4. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. Come on. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. You see that thing? So the nations are going to rebuild our cities. They're going to build our cities from the ground up. That's what's going to happen. But the most God is promising us, you look at the, all the scriptures that we went over, 
is to show you the prison break that the Lord is, the, the blueprint to the prison break. The Lord has given us the blueprint. It's in the, that's the Bible. The Bible is the blueprint for this prison break. Okay? So that we can what? We can be eligible for the kingdom that's coming on this earth. You understand? I'm going to end the class right here. Okay? Let's break bread. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in, in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praise to the most high for that class. All praises.